What's up guys, War here, and today I'm going to show you the fastest way to self-power up inside Diablo 3. Let's do it. The first thing you want to do is create your brand new character in whatever game mode that your previous level 70 character was played in. For me, it's seasonal. I've been having a blast in season 26, but I want to do it with a monk and show you how fast this process is, guys. After that, you want to go over to game settings and you want to put it on adventure mode. If you don't have adventure mode unlocked, you're going to have to complete the campaign or have somebody skip you all the way to the end to defeat the last boss, okay? And then it unlocks adventure mode. Next, we want to change our difficulty off of normal and put it on the highest difficulty we can before the game, you know, makes it locked because we're not level 70. The highest difficulty we can put it on is Torment 6. The reason we want it on Torment 6 is because it gives us a 1600% extra exp bonus which is gonna just rocket us and blast us to level 70 as fast as possible before we blast our way to level 70 there's a couple items that we need to get started first is going to be the legendary gem of ease this gem drops from doing greater rifts inside of diablo 3. the reason we want the gem of ease is because it's the bread and butter of self power leveling it reduces the level requirement of any item it's socketed to level one because we're going to be crafting a level 70 item, we're not going to be able to use this without the Gem of Ease. Once that's socketed, we're going to be able to equip it, and now we can use a level 70 weapon. To get your level 70 weapon, all you have to do is come over to the blacksmith guys, and you're going to craft a two-handed level 70 weapon. Make sure it's for the right class that you're going to be playing. And then once you finish crafting it, what you're gonna be looking for is hopefully it has a socket so we can use our gem of ease. If you don't have one, you can go to the artisan and re-roll, or you can come over here to the Kanias cube, use recipe three and upgrade your rare item. I would recommend getting a, le a legendary item. That way it's a lot stronger. And hopefully with the upgrade, you do get a socket on it. We got the flying dragon. We were unlucky and not didn't get a socket, but that's okay because we already have one with the incense torch of the Grand Temple. The next items that you're going to need to boost this process even faster is the Kane's Fate set. The reason we want this set is because once you have all three set bonus, you're going to get 50% extra experience. This is a huge boost when we're trying to power level really fast in Diablo 3. Now, to get the Kane set, you can come over here to the a blacksmith and forge it inside of the armor there's four different pieces that you can pick you can pick whatever three that you would like but i recommend doing the gloves the pants and the boots the next item that we're going to want to have for this process guys is the leoric's crown the leoric's crown increases the effect of any gem socketed into it by 96 percent or 100 if you happen to have it maxed out leoric's crown drops from the skeleton king or from act one bounties so hopefully if you farmed a little bit on your level 70 character and this item is dropped for you. If you don't have it, that's okay. It's just going to slow down the process just a little bit. The next item that we're going to need with Leoric's Crown is the Flawless Royal Ruby. The Flawless Royal Ruby is the maximum or the highest level gem that you can craft in Diablo 3. The reason being is because once you socket this into a helm, you're getting 41% extra experience. So as we discussed with Leoric's Crown, this increases the effect by 96%. So we're going to get almost 82 extra EXP on every single kill that we have with this gem and this helmet. It's a pretty sick combo, which will speed up this process even faster. Now to craft the Royal Ruby, you're going to go over to the Gem Artisan and you're going to hopefully have enough gems to craft this all the way up. If you don't, that's okay. Just craft the highest level gem that you can to insert into the Leoric's Crown. A few other items worth mentioning, guys, to help speed up the process. First is going to be Leoric's Signet. This ring is going to increase your experience by up to 30%. To get Leoric's Signet, all you have to do is gamble like a dollar. You can get this, this ring at level 1. Next is the Hellfire Ring. The Hellfire Ring is amazing. You can craft this at any level and use it at level 1. The reason we want the Hellfire Ring is because it'll give you up to 45% extra exp on top of everything you already have so after the hellfire ring and leoric signet you're getting 75 percent extra experience to be able to craft the hellfire ring you're going to want to come to act two and you're going to want to see squirt the peddler squirt the peddler is going to have a couple designs that you see here and you want you're going to want to get the one that says hellfire ring for two million gold this is the basic hellfire ring that we're going to need to craft 
now that we have all of our items to get started guys there's still two more things that we need to do before we start killing monsters the first thing is going to be our kanias cube abilities these are going to help us deal maximum amount of damage and help keep us alive now a lot of this is going to be dependent on what abilities that your original level 70 character has gotten for the cube and then what class you're doing to power up for me it's the monk i've played a monk before so i do have some of these items but we're going to do the um, binding lesser of the gods the reason for this is because we have the crudest boots now you can craft these if you want if you have a certain set that you're trying to play or a certain kind of build that you're trying to do you can also roll these inside of kadala okay i'm going to be focusing on using the mystic ally bonus to help get me through those last levels now inside of our weapon cube a lot of this is going to be dependent on what level 70 item that you have but for me it's going to be really really easy there's a couple different options we could use the furnace for increased damage against elites we could use a known to reduce our cooldowns when we kill packs we could even use like balance or even flying dragon to increase our attack speed when we're attacking so my personal recommendation is to always use something that's going to help you deal the most amount of damage in the queue now we do have the incense torch of the grand temple which is going to give us increased damage to wave of light but that's going to be a secondary thing we're mainly going to be using mystic allies so we almost want to attack as fast as possible so i'm going to use the flying dragon now when it comes to your ring slot a lot of this is going to be dependent on what you have as i said before but you could use the royal a ring of grandeur if you're only going to use two of the canes fate set and something else now for example i am going to be using the cruise boots once we hit 16 so i'm not going to be able to use the canes sandals that's going to leave me only two slots for the cane set because i'm going to be using the leoric's crown so i'm going to have to use the ring of royal grandeur now the last thing that we're going to go over guys and this one's pretty simple but it's the last thing is our paragon levels our paragon levels are going to be a representation of how far we've gotten with our original 70 character i have 730 levels you may have more or less than me and that's okay you're going to use these to the best ability and how many points you got so the paragon levels are going to help keep you alive it's all about survivability so we're going to go in, you're just going to follow along with me and increase the ones that you can and the ones that you can't, that's okay. So we want life per hit, resource, area damage, last is gold pickup. We want armor, resist all, life, and life regen. We want crit hit, chance, and damage, cooldown cool down reduction, and then attack speed. And then this in our core is a flex. You don't want to put anything into here because we're going to be killing monsters way fast. You could do movement speed, but I think what we're going to try to do here is try to stay alive as much as possible. So I'm going to put all my points into dexterity. Okay, guys, we have all the items that we need. We got our gem in there. We have our weapon with the gem of ease. We have our paragon levels done. We have our Kanias cube abilities set. All we're ready to do now is to go kill monsters. Now, I have a few recommendations that I'd like to put on the map for you guys. So the first couple places are going to be places that you can get massacre bonusing the fastest. The reason I say that is because you're going to gain about 55 levels in the first couple minutes. But after that, the levels from 55 on to 70 are going to be real tough because the monsters scale to the difficulty that you're playing. And we're playing Torment 6. So the places that I like to do massacre bonusing is in Act 3 at Temple of the Firstborn, or excuse me, Act 2 in Temple of the Firstborn, Act 3 at Ruins of Cesaron, and then Act 5 at the Ruins of Corvus. Other good spots are the Halls of Agony 2 and 3. And then once you get up there to like 60, you want to have a little bit of space to move around, so I recommend the Fields of Misery. So any of these places work out great, so just pick one and go with it and start slaying monsters. All right, guys, we're going to go do a live gameplay of this so you guys can see how easy and how fast that this method is. That is going to be a separate video, so the link for that will be down in the description below. I really appreciate it if you go check it out so you can see how easy this method is. If you guys did enjoy today's video and it helps you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new here. 
let me know down in the comments if this method has helped you out and let me know if you do do this how fast you did it in okay let's see if you can beat my record i think the last time i did this i did it in 10 minutes again thank you guys so much for watching and as always stay gaming and i'll catch you in the next one peace